Hi, the Raspberry Pi Zero W is here, which adds the same Wi-Fi chip as seen on the Pi 3. This video isn't a full review, but instead takes a look at additional power requirements compared to the Pi Zero, and Wi-Fi performance compared to the Pi 3. If you saw Micmac Mail Episode 6, you will have seen a rundown of the differences between the Pi Zero and the Pi Zero W, so I don't need to repeat it here. I think every one of the million plus people who owns a Raspberry Pi also knows how to download the latest Raspberry image and burn it to SD card. If you don't know how to do this, check out my tutorial on this. However, since I want to do my testing headless, then I need to enable Ethernet over USB. The handy thing about the Pi Zero is that the USB port is directly connected to this SOC and so we can set up the Pi Zero as a USB slave. So under the boot directory I modified the cmdline.txt file and added this. And in the config.txt file I added this. Make sure you eject the card before removing. Then chuck it into the Pi Zero and chuck one end of your USB cable into the second USB port. The one labelled USB, not the one labelled power. Then chuck the other end into your PC. On my Mac it appeared as an RNDIS device and since the Pi also had a zero conf service running I was able to ping the Pi Zero easily and SSH into it. Easy as Pi. Next I configured the Zero to automatically connect to my Wi-Fi access point using WPA CLI. First scan for the access points. You can display the results using this command. Then add a network and set the SSID and password for that network you just created. Lastly, enable it. You should see it successfully connecting. Then save this config file so that it will automatically connect when you reboot. Quit out of that, check that you indeed have an IP address, then you'll be able to log in via Wi-Fi easily. Since I don't have any options for direct attached storage on the Zero, I mounted up a copy of all my test software via NFS, and then went through all the lengthy installation of software making sure to update the Debian repositories first and install any dependencies for the Pharonix test suite. The essential iPerf3 needed to be installed. I wasn't really interested in testing everything on the Pi Zero as, well, it's all been done before. For this test, I'm just looking at comparing Wi-Fi performance between the Pi 3 and the Pi Zero W. Why is this? Well, the Pi 3 uses the same wireless chip as the Pi Zero W but it uses a ceramic antenna instead of the resonant cavity on the Pi Zero W. So I wonder what difference this makes. Once I'd set up the Pi 3 the same as the Pi Zero W, I disconnected the Ethernet to avoid it interfering with the results. And there we have the two of them ready to test. Before I start, I need to make sure that the Linux kernel is the same on both boards. The Pi Zero had 4.4.50 and the Pi 3 had an older 4.4.20. So a round of RPI update to fix this on the Pi 3. The Pi Zero W didn't have RPI update installed. So I installed it, updated the kernel and rebooted. Okay, I'm probably going to get some comments about this. It's just a leftover of the old SunOS days where you just had to make sure everything was written to disk before rebooting. Look, just ignore it. It's something that is automatic for me. So once everything was rebooted, both kernels were running 4.9.13. Nice. First, some simple iperf tests. I ran the iperf server on my Mac and ran a TCP bandwidth test from the zero first. Hmm, 2.31 megabits per second, a little slow. So what about the Pi 3? Okay, 10.5 megabits per second. Not looking good for the Zero W, but bear in mind that it's only a $10 board. It's not a Ferrari you're getting, so still pretty good. UDP tests were a bit surprising. The Pi Zero was dropping packets all over the place with a final result of 54 milliseconds jitter and almost 9% packet loss. Wow. The Pi 3 looked like it was heading the same way, but eventually settled down to a 2 millisecond jitter and almost 2% packet loss. So the numbers are fairly consistent with TCP. If you're wondering how far away my access point was, then it was just up the hallway which was an HP M220. Then I ran a longer iperf test using Pharonix so that I could upload the results to the Open Benchmarking website. Interestingly, the Pi Zero W with its resonance cavity antenna has 60% the performance of the Pi 3 
and as you saw earlier, drops packets like, oh, I don't know, insert the name of the worst sports player here. Next, I wanted to test out how much current this wireless chip pulls. So, first use the original Pi Zero as a baseline. There was a peak of 178 milliamps during boot, and eventually settling down to around 86 milliamps, with the keyboard and mouse adding another 15 milliamps on top. Powering off saw it drop down to a steady 45 milliamps once the LED had finished its business, whilst the Pi Zero W saw the current draw hit a peak of 254 milliamps during boot, with an idle oscillation of 120 to 180 milliamps. Strangely, while bashing the Wi-Fi with an iPerf test, saw the current draw bounce around the 160 milliamp mark, with the occasional peak up to 200 milliamps. And powering off the Pi Zero W, saw it sit around 30 milliamps. So, what do I think of the new Pi Zero W? Well, bang for your buck, it's still the best thing to get, and having wireless inbuilt just makes it even more so. The track or copper based antenna is a great idea for lowering cost, but this also reduces the effective range. It doesn't suit everyone, but you know, that's the good thing about having choices in this world. You pick the product that best fits your needs. Anyway, thanks for watching and see you next week.